Hello, welcome back to another weekly reflection. Um, it's a little bit of a different view, you know. I'm usually sitting back there, but I've switched the view. And so now you can kind of see the mess that is over there. That is the guest bed slash throw everything on there if you don't have anything or have any room on your desk bed. Um, yeah, it's, I hope everything's going well with everyone else out there. Uh, this week has been, I, okay, so for like this week's weekly reflection, I didn't actually do <laughs> this week's weekly reflection because I hadn't had time to write anything down on Friday. Cause Friday I was like, I'm, I'm done for today. I'm just gonna log off and I'm gonna probably do that for Monday. However, for, n I did do two weeks ago and it's a little different. Oh, something, it's on my phone. Let me check my phone. All right, so I finally pulled up my notes here on my phone just so I can get to remember. It's been two weeks, so I'm trying to remember if anything happened. I think uh, two weeks ago, the main thing that came, or the main theme that I came across was uh, fast and iterative testing. Um, so one of the things, I'm just gonna be very blunt, is doing any type of like user research, testing, all of that kind of stuff. It's it's one of those things that, you know, I can do it if I need to do it. However, it's not always my favorite thing to do. I'm gonna put the truth out there. However, I do understand the importance of it just because like, that's how you gain information. That's how you learn about product space. That's how you learn about people. That's how you learn a lot of different things. And so the last couple of weeks have me in this like user research more usability testing phase and just trying to test out some new patterns and interactions in our application just because I want to explore that see how people would re how people would receive it and what the reception was and so the way that I approach this for this particular usability test or testing that I've been exploring is I have access to Maze as a tool for our design team and I put a test together and I just put it out there to see how to, it would be received. And it's really interesting because I've always had this feeling that my test needs to be perfect, right? And one of the things that I think I gained this week or that week was learning that when you're making tests, like design in general, because it is a design, it is also an iterative process. I actually learned a lot from doing the test and realized like, I actually learned a lot more. I, I learned a lot of takeaways from doing the test more so than the test itself. But yeah, um, what I mean by that is the next time I decide to do a test of this sort, there are some things that I just need to be more mindful of and more cognizant of, of, for example, like sourcing. How, how do I source groups of people to test? What am I looking for when I'm sourcing groups to test? And it's not just, if I'm trying to create random groups or compare groups, how, what is gonna be my approach to do that? And then how is that going to be handed off and sent to those different groups. So these are just some kind of the things to think about of like, even be even before people take the test, people go through it, thinking about the different variables and the environment and how, how it's going to be received is going to impact your results. So that was definitely a big takeaway this week. And I'm not saying that uh, I didn't, there weren't takeaways from the test for like insights or metrics to gain from it, which that's another thing of like when doing testing or doing any type of research, I feel like people who are like fam like UX researchers and are familiar with this kind of space or this is their jam, you know, there's this difference between metrics and insights. And what I mean by that is I think being for me, is being cognizant of like, you put the test out there, you get all this information, you get all this data, right? And there are numbers, right? There are numbers there, those are the metrics you look at, like 
this many people completed this task, this many people clicked here, this many people didn't click here, all these things. Those are those are the numbers. But at the end of the day, it's the insights and the patterns that you take away from those numbers. And sometimes, even with objective numbers, those objective numbers can be interpretive as sort of subjective insights. And what I mean by that is because one of the, another thing that I caught away from that test was that there are result assumptions, meaning like based on how everything from start to end and how everything happened, the results and the metrics that were gained from it, there are some assumptions around them that have to be considered before you can just say these metrics are these metrics. Like if five people misclicked here, it's not just, okay, five missed people misclicked here. Why did that happen? What were the, what was the situation that made them misclick? Um, does their familiarity with the app impact why they misclicked? Are they super familiar? Are they not familiar? Um, and a lot of other different things that are involved in thinking about just user testing in general. So honestly, those, those are my biggest takeaways from this, this past week. Um, again, research is not necessarily my biggest forte, but I think there's a lot to gain and learn from it. And I'm doing my write-up this, well, I started my write-up for this test last week. Ooh, sounds and cars. Last week and now I'm trying to figure out like, well, no, I'm not trying to figure it out. I'm writing it up and I'm going to share it with people. I can't share it externally, unfortunately. I meant like internally with my team and stuff like that, but still crafting it, putting together, making sure it makes sense and interpreting the data and making it very clear. Like these insights that I gain have assumptions around them. Um, and uh, just being clear with that. So yeah. The only other thing that I really want to share is not even design related, but I got into a new hobby. What is this? This is supposed to become a spoon. Wood carving. That's a really loud car. Don't know if you can hear it. Wood carving um, has become my newest hobby. Um, this was my very first spoon. Here's my very first spoon, you know, ta-da. It's a little, it's a little... This scoopy part is kind of big, but whatever. This is my second spoon, and so far my prized possession. Um, my favorite one so far, and spoons. I love carving spoons. Um, this is my third one, and you know, this one is interesting because I had to carve around the knots here. And I think it's really, it makes it unique, you know, playing into the unique natures of the spoon versus trying to just get rid of or hide um, this spoon's qualities, right? So it's interesting because weirdly enough, I feel like it's like a nice holding pattern. Okay, and this is my fourth spoon that I actually finished carving today. It looks like a little person almost. The only reason why the handle is like this is again, a knot. There's a knot. So that is, those are the four spoons that I've worked on so far. All of them are I use mineral oil to oil them. Oh, and then this, I'm still working through this one, but I'm making a little dinosaur too. So here's my little dinosaur. That's about it. And then this is gonna be another spoon that it's a big chunky piece of wood that I still working through. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit of a side thing of like side projects and side projects. So that's all, that's kind of my main, weekly things um hope you like videos like this if not super casual literally me just talking to a phone and being super casual about it uh i will see what happens in the next weekly reflection of my work and